It's a Sunday in July. There are hammers on the communion table, brand new hammers just off the shelves of Home Depot, and old hammers, hickory handles worn dark and smooth. The whole congregation is there, hands raised, palms out toward those hammers, hands stretching out, stretching up, showering down blessings on those hammers. Hammers soon to be carried out on a mission trip where they will pound nails into wood, lay floors, frame doors, make things new, make things better. It's a Sunday in January. Two days earlier, an airstrike in the Gaza Strip killed 19 people and destroyed 15 homes. The fear and hatred radiating from the Holy Land are so hot they can be felt around the world. So everyone in the congregation stands, turns toward Israel, and raises their hands. Our arms and our hands become a forest, stretching out, stretching up, showering down blessing onto that land of so much strife, so much blood on that land so beautiful, so contested, so ancient, so holy. Together we pray. Together we beg God to bless the lands of Israel and Palestine with what elude them. Peace. We pray for God to make all things new, to make all things better. It's a Sunday in September. The children have all brought their backpacks to church. They are so excited. They skip and dance into the sanctuary, trying at once to see and point to the pretty backpack. On her own back, a young girl in a summer dress twirls around in circles. The children clamber up the steps onto the chancel. Then they take off their backpacks and they hold them up. They lift them as high as they can for all to see. And we do it again. We do it all over again. We raise our hands, stretching out, stretching up, showering down, blessing upon blessing. And we pray. Oh God, bless these backpacks. Make them strong for their job of helping our children to learn. Make them strong. May their straps never break, their padding never give out, their zippers never jam. May they never be forgotten in strange places. May the burdens in them be light, and may the bodies that bear them be strong and growing and whole and blessed. Ever blessed by your love. Bless. In the name of the great teacher at whose knee we are all students, amen. If you worship with us, with any regularity at Old South Church. One thing will become very clear very soon. We bless pretty much anything that moves, and plenty of things that don't. Bless dinosaurs. Worship with us over the course of a year, and you will be asked to take up that ancient posture of benediction. You will be asked to bless. Bless backpacks. Bless back and cheese. Bless hammers. Bless plants. You'll be asked to bless confirmands, volunteers, church leaders, and the leaders of nations. Bless the leaders of nations. Bless the waters of baptism and the cup and bread of Christ's communion at his table. Bless, bless bread. You'll be asked to bless friends and enemies, new homes and new relationships, canned goods, casseroles, and prayer shawls. You'll be asked to bless ripe tomatoes warmed by the sun in our own urban churchyard garden as we send them out on their way to feed the most vulnerable women in Boston. Worship with us, and we'll ask you to turn towards, towards, not away from, airstrikes and earthquakes and national elections together because there is strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers. We will stand in silence, 
each of us praying his or her own unspoken prayers. Our blessings crossing and crisscrossing each other, winging their way across the Atlantic, across the Pacific, to hot tempers in Washington, D.C., and to the hot sands of Iraq. Jesus did it as much and often as he could. He blessed the bread and the cup. He blessed children. He blessed the poor, the hungry, the meek, the merciful, the pure in heart, the ones who mourn, the persecuted, the peacemakers. He blessed his disciples, and he instructed them. He instructed us. You go out there and bless others. Bless animals. Bless friends. But he also warned us. Be careful what you bless, for a blessing is a bond. It's a promise and a covenant, a sending and a sign. Don't you think, don't ever think, a blessing is just words. A blessing is different. It's a peace-making, earth-shaking, dead-waking, light-creating, dark-abating act that we're talking about here. Did you really think you could lift up your hands, extend your arms, and call down that power and not be changed? Did you really think that you could channel that in blessing and not be chained forever to the thing you blessed? What would ever make you think that God would bless at your command and not use you to fulfill your own demand? So be careful what you bless for, and don't you think, don't ever think that you can bless and leave. Your blessing is your covenant, your sending, sign, and bond. When you lift up your hands, when you extend your arms, stretching up as if in this blessing earth and heaven at last were one, when you call down that peace-making, earth-shaking, dead-waking, light-creating, dark-abating, source of all that loves and lives, power of God, you can be sure that you will be a part of God's plan. Blessed are the last. Blessed are the least. Blessed are the lost. Because God is sending the church. God is sending you, drenched in the spirit, to bless and to be a blessing. You see, a blessing is a transmittal of power. A blessing originates in God and from God, and it courses through the priest's body, and it lands out on the designee, the hammer, the water, the child, the dying one, the bread. It courses through our bodies because we are priests. We are all priests. We are all priests. We are all equipped to mediate the power and the blessing of God. You, church, are carriers of God's power. What we're doing to the hammers and the backpacks, the tomatoes and the shawls, we are supercharging them. We are, we are supercharging them. We are supercharging them. We're supercharging them. Hammers, supercharged by you, then carried out to make all things new. This act of blessing, it's learned in church. It's practiced in worship, but I know for a fact that it works even better out there beyond those walls. It works even better. When you are out and about, meeting and mingling in the world, visiting a friend in the hospital, placing a gentle hand on her arm, snuggling the roots of a young plant into the earth and patting the soil around it. When you make a meal, sift flour, knead bread, and when you carry your gift to your neighbor in need, when a sister presses her palm against the glass that separates her from her brother in prison, when you hold your lover's face in your hand, Blessing. This, this is the secret, sweet, sacred power of the people of God. Superman can fly. 
Spider-Man, he can cling to any surface. And Batman, oh, he has lots and lots of gadgets. But you, you don't need gadgets. You can bless. You're supercharged. Your body is a conduit for God's love and mercy. You're made to bless. You are made to bless. We are made to bless. It's a Sunday in July, January, or September. Or a Thursday in October. Go and be who you are meant to be. Who you are made to be. You are made. Every one of us is made, each in our own way, to bless. Bless. Bless you. Bless you.